What's going on, everybody? Washington here, back with another paper to review. And first of all, Happy New Year, you guys. Hope you all had a great time. And we're starting off the year with the review of Frost King, which is the figure that we collect to build all these four figures, starting from Wonder Woman all the way to Black Adam. And this is Frost King. And no, not the window installation Frost King. This Frost King is the character from the... Well, his first appearance was in the comic book of Justice League Endless Winter, issue number one, back in 2020. And and yeah, Frost King is a powerful metahuman with a, with a, with a cryocanic abilities from the 10th century Greenland. And his name or official name is Edwo Alafson. I love Sun. Obviously, you know, from centuries ago, there used to be these old, this ancient Justice League, like before the Justice League that we know now, they were different characters. And uh, that's something that we will be talking about in another occasion. Right now, we want to focus on the figure here. So, yeah, starting off with Frost King here, you know, he's a pretty heavy dude. Really nice, really heavy figure. And obviously his appearance, like, he does look pretty bulky, you know, with bubbly arms. He's got this really cool, you know, shoulder pad with these spiky um, eyes. And obviously on the other side, it has a, some kind of, like, fur. And, like, it's like a pattern right there. Like, on the left gauntlet, there's fur. And on the right one, there's the ice. And on the right uh, shoulder pad, there's more for than ice, and this one's just pure ice. So yeah, it's kind of like a weird like, little pattern there. And yeah, it's just uh, horns. They're also like the eyes are like just coming out of his his uh, head there. And uh, I really like the cape. The cape is a really nice, you know, texture, really good detail. Also, the rip outs that it has on the edge of the cape. Nicely rubbery plastic. Obviously, it could be removed, but uh, it also it's a pain in the ass to pack it back in. So I'm not gonna bother on taking it out. And um, obviously, he's got some fur down there on the uh, on the feet here. And uh, yeah, he's got this little belt buckle of this wolf or bear. I'm not sure if it's wolf or bear. What do you guys think? And he's got obviously some horns sticking out too, so you know he's got a more, he's got like a uh, a Viking you know appearance, yeah. I mean he is from the tenth century, so yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like really really heavy, really hard plastic that he, that uh, he has, and he's look look like he's got some like butterflies going here too, and the shoulder pads are rubber plastic. They're not attached to the shoulders, they're more like close to the uh, bicep. And that's a good thing, that way there's no limitation on some of the articulations that we're going to see in a little bit too. The beard was also a little rubbery plastic too as well. The back of the hair, you know, not too uh, not too soft, but you know, it's still a little bit flexible. And uh, yeah. And he only has one closed fist and... One gripping hand, so he's only going to be holding the sword on the right hand. And obviously, the sword is a nice little translucent plastic, also bendable. Just don't bend it too much because you know there's that risk of breaking it. Obviously, it looks like the texture, like it's made out of ice. And another thing that we're forgetting is to measure this guy, which Frost King, you know, he measures up to nine inches. Nine inches that turns out to be 23 centimeters. And if you want to measure him up all the way to from his head, it's actually nine inches. And if you want to measure from his horns, which is ends up to be nine inches and a half, which is 14 centimeters. But yeah, this, this figure is nine inches. And obviously he towers the eight, the seven inch McFarlane figures that you see right next to him. Better yet, seven inches and a half McFarlane figures. So he's a pretty tall dude. 
And obviously for articulation, his all his head is on a ball peg, which obviously you could tell side to side, rotate all the way around, full three sixty. And uh for looking down, you know, very limited, almost non existing. And so for looking up it's about this range too. So yeah. And obviously he's got ball joints on his shoulders. He's got, you know, quite extension on the arms, really really acceptable nicely uh done and he's got the, obviously that butterfly joint that we were talking about you can move it side to side and up and down as well his grip is good and the armor obviously he has got the articulation on the chest there but obviously it's like almost like it's like so in the way so it can't do much and he has this loose waist Obviously, he's got that bow joint in the waist that he can rotate and also, you know, rock on the sides too. Also, side to side pivots. And uh, he has a single hinge on the elbow. And obviously, you can swivel as well. He's got a hinge on the wrist and also can swivel as well. His figure obviously is a little stiff, but yeah. Same thing on the other hand. Hinge, swivel, the wrist hinge, and also swivels. And obviously, this one doesn't have any cut, thigh cuts, but he does have these parts here where he, um, had, <clears throat> where he could actually rotate the legs very little, like about this much. And obviously, the legs will come off because he's got this huge peg right there we have to connect it with this other peg hole that's right down there and it's like really frustrating sometimes to get them to be put together so yeah that's one of the things that a lot of uh, collectors are always uh talking about how how hard it is to connect the legs and sometimes they just fall off just like it fall out on me right now but yeah the Split on the legs about this much, quite acceptable. And the leg keeps falling off again. Really frustrating, but yeah. For a kicking range about this much, very limited. And he has double hinge on the knees, which is good. And obviously the feet can hinge up and down. And I don't know if they can rock side to side, not sure. But yeah, you can, you can actually move the legs by the crotch area like this much. He doesn't have that thigh cut like we were talking about. So yeah, he's got the hinge on the toe there. He's got the peg holes for base stamp. There's no uh, there's no stamp or there's no uh, mark of McFarlane or McFarlane toys or any of that. Strange. But yeah, the only accessory obviously is the the sword. You know, that's the only thing that they gave us. For this guy and for comparison size we already told you that he towers the seven inch and a half dc figures from mcfarlane so yeah here you have him with another figures that are close to his scale here you have him with the dark knights death metal dark side batman eight inch mcfarlane figure which Frost King is still a little bit taller than him, and right next to him you can see him with a Build-A-Figure, Marvel Legends, Tri-Sentinel, also 8 inches. From Diamond Select, here you see him with an 8 inch and a half beast, and an eight and a 9 inch Colossal. Due to the horns, he's still a little bit taller than Colossal. And a lot bulkier too. And speaking of bulky, here you see him with a 9-inch King Shark collector bill figure. And here you have him with a Monster Venom from Marvel Legends, 8-inch. And he still towers a little bit more by an inch, by a few centimeters actually, from King Shark. So yeah, he's a big guy. But obviously he's not... As tall as this Art Sky Predator, 11 inches. 
And speaking of aliens, here you see him with two 9-inch Xenomorphs from NECA. And with one 9-inch Predator, AVP Predator, and one 8-inch Predator, also from NECA. So yeah, what do you guys think of this figure? I mean, obviously you can guys check him out uh, more. Look, at, You can look more of this character in the Justice League, Endless Winter, uh, issue number one. And uh, that is if you're more interested in this character. And uh, speaking of these figures, I mean, there there is a fifth figure that obviously doesn't have any of the pieces of this, this guy. You know, just like when Marvel does that, they always add another figure that has no uh, piece of the collective build figure included. And that one was actually Aquaman. And that's the only figure that I didn't get to review because I didn't collect it. This is something I just found out from another collector. But yeah, probably in the future I might get an Aquaman Justice League Atlas Winter and do his review too. But yeah, what do you guys think of this figure? Would you add them to your collection? Or are you guys interested in any of these four figures that you can collect or build this guy? Let me know in the comments. And thank you guys for watching. Happy New Year, everyone. See you all next time.